crisis. And anyone who had an idea of how the American economy had run between 2001 to 2007 knew that the entire economy was run by just giving money to the people and asking them to buy goods, that's all. There has been no net addition to the productive value of the economy. Because 71% of the American economy is run by consumption. And that consumption is not produced, it is not the result of production within the economy, it's import. Because imports were allowed, America was opening its market and using it as geopolitical power to dominate the world politically, it was needed. The world needs a leader, but we need a responsible leader. And what happened in the process? America became weak. As a result, the world has become weak. It is only those countries which have stable families, stable saving models, safe saving models, and not risky saving models, which have not gone on, gone on to financial innovations through this, through uh, derivative uh, <coughs> modeling of finance. Only those economies are safe today. But will you find any debate like this taking place in Indian media? Among Indian professionals? Because we have no original thinking. We don't assess the world, we accept the world. We don't critique them, we borrow from them. And see uh, Singapore, see Hong Kong. This is how our economic reformers used to talk to and debate with us. And these are countries, we, we can build 20 Singapore's. That will not lift India. Because Singapore is a clone of civilization, clone of economy, cloned up economy. And these arguments were advanced to transform India into a very different country. India cannot be transformed into a different country in economic terms or in political terms unless it is done in social and civilizational and cultural terms also. And we are basically a relation based to society. And the modern economy, the political model, the market economic instruments are based on contract based association. Contracts have begun substituting relationships in the West. It has not stopped with business, it has not stopped with markets, it has entered homes, and that is why the whole basis of a civilization has been disrupted. They have accepted contracts at home between not only husband and wife, father and son. There are attempts in America of sons seeking divorce from the father. Don't think this crisis is unrelated to the overall instability that is occurring in the societies, in the families, relationship between people. And the debate used to be in the 19th century whether contract-based socio-economic model will survive without a relation-based society. People like Emil Durkheim was supposed to be a great sociologist in Germany. He said that you cannot produce a contract-based political and economic model unless there is a strong relation based to society. You must know how to manage a relation based society and a contract based political economic order. Show me one debate in India on this. Because we never debated the world. We never critiqued them. And so my appeal wherever I am, whether I write, whether I speak, personally or in an audience, I always appeal to the best Indian minds to think, to know what is India. And we are not one of those small countries, we are one-sixth of humanity. We can't live on the strength of others. In fact, we are supposed to produce strength and on that basis make others live. Strength doesn't mean bank balance. Strength means the stability of life, stability of living model. Restraint on consumption and not consuming whatever is produced. And the target audience in India, which is creating this distortion in the Indian mind, is the English educated Indian. The English educated Indian automatically becomes an intellectual because he talks in English. 
There is no other qualification needed in India that somebody talks well in English, he is accepted as an intellectual. The content of the talk is available, the container of English is sufficient. English is status. It is no more a language in this country. Understand 60 years after the British House have left India, if English dominates as a language, I can understand English dominating as a form of communication. Yes, we must master that language. We have the Englishmen in their game, but we need not become Englishmen. Where is this original thinking in business, in profession, in academics, amongst bureaucrats? I will relate one experience which I had with a Japanese bureaucrat in the year 1997. It was such a shocking experience for me. It's now more than 11 years old, I can even mention the name of the person, though I would choose not to. He was the Joint Secretary of MITI, the Ministry of Industry, International Trade and Industry, which is supposed to be the main power center of the Japanese establishment. He had sought a meeting with me and Mr. Govinda Chaja, who was then the General Secretary of the Bharti Janata Party. And uh, in the meeting I said that uh, we Indians have a great weakness. Then we talk a lot. And you Japanese have a great uh, asset. You don't talk. You don't even laugh. You know, they, I have never seen them laughing at this mind. Of course, with the great contrivance. I have read something about Japan. In the year 1870, thereabouts, Japan decided that it is demeaning to be called an Asian nation. And they started a movement called Datsuye movement. Leave Asia, join the rest. That is how they all began dressing like Westerners. Their office will be like a Western office. Their homes will be like the Japanese home. In Japanese home, nobody wears other than a Japanese. Nothing is worn other than a Japanese. They all sit on the floor. There is no sofa at home. There is no chair at home. So Japan at home, America in office. This is how they divide. Because in 1854, America sent the Navy and told the Japanese, unless you are going to open the market, we will conquer it. And that is what is called gunboat diplomacy today. Japan agreed to open its